Go ahead, put it on real tight. I hope you brought your best tonight. They say they got the fireworks, yeah, they say they got the show. Here around the shoots, you're the best, so let's go. This is Texas Toast. I'm your host, Miss Helen. Kick back and enjoy as we toast the best from Texas. Welcome to Texas Toast with Miss Helen, along with a guest that I feel like I already know you because we've kind of communicated, but I want to welcome Brad Russell from the Brad Russell Band. Hello, Brad. How's it going? It's going well. Yes, it's, it's good, good to be on here. And thanks for, uh, thanks for asking me. And like you said, we have communicated a little bit. So yes. and then I've checked out a couple of y'all's podcasts. So I feel like I know you too. So you kind of know what's up. I know like a couple of times when you've texted me, I didn't answer right back. And I was like, just getting back to the boat ramp. Sorry, but yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard having friends who are always living their best life, but I understand. <laughs> Well, you are doing, speaking of Best Life, you're doing wonderful with your music. We featured your current single that's out, Let Him Break My Heart. I like to say it like that. So let's talk about your new single and how you chose it and, and kind of the background on it. Yeah, so we recorded that um, as kind of a six pack. Another EP is a follow up to our first EP um, right before at the end of 2019, the turn of 2020. And everybody knows what happened at the turn of 2020. So we got all this music back and we kind of sat on it and didn't release it. And then grew as a band. And I finally was like, man, I got to put these songs out. So, you know, uh, I decided I, I put out uh, Nobody Like You. Um, and then I decided I was going to put this one out. So I don't know. I think we've we've had a good response to it, but mm -hmm. even the song has evolved from 2020, you know, we're talking two years ago. Well, so, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just saying it, it's hard. It's hard to uh, put something out there that you're like, man, I wish we could re-record it right now, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's evolved into something even more, but it's still cool to, to get it out there and to, for people to hear it and get a good response. And, you know, like, like you did featuring us on that, um, I think it was two weeks ago, you know, it, mm -hmm. you know, when somebody connects with your music like that, it's like, heck yeah, man. Yeah. Then I started Good listening, stuff. started listening to some of your other music and we're going to get into a few songs I picked that I want to talk about as well. But the one thing I liked about you, what I like about you is just, you know, getting to know you through some texts and emails, but you know, the, the email that you sent me over prior to the podcast, you know, you were talking about the, the pre pandemic EP and how, you, you just seem, I, I love that you were so patient and that you sat on songs and then you progressively seen, you know, you, you were able to see that, hey, we're working together, the band sounding better. And I mean, that's, that says a lot for a musician. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get it out there immediately, you know, mm -hmm. and then, and then you kind of have a, uh, you have a backlog, so to speak, because now we have more tunes that it's like, man, we don't even care about those songs. There's other songs that so two years ago, you know, mm -hmm. but but you know it's it was patient and then um you know dusty moats just said dude you got to put that just put oh, that song yeah. out just put it out you know he, he's an executor you know so he's like just put it out oh man record something else and put it out so we love dusty he was he was such a fun interview and he's just you know you can tell his mind never stops and of course you now you you were the one that co-wrote lake in it easy with him right Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, he had that idea and, uh, it was funny. He was calling me. He was like, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. He's like, you got your guitar. I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> listen to this. And he texted me the words and I was like, let me call you back. And so I kind of listened, kind of played it in my head, how I heard a late vibe, you know, kind of being on the water and me and him worked it out over the phone, which that was a first for me, you know, writing with somebody that's not right there. Wow, so. that's cool. Over the phone. So tell me about your band. I understand your dad and your son play in the band with you. Is that still tr the case? And so I want to say about five months ago, we um, got a new bass player. My dad, I think he's pushing 66. And uh, we just, you know, we made decisions to roll forward and go ahead and, and do it now. 
And, uh, but yeah, my son's still playing drums. I think we spent three years just being my son and my dad. And eventually we found Oh Haystack to throw in some steel guitar, but it was me and my son and my dad traveling around for a year and a half, just making a lot more memories than money. You know, it's pretty cool. That is cool. Let's talk about your background, how you got into music. Well, family, you know, obviously my, dad. <laughs> yeah, my, so my dad comes from a large family. Uh, I think there's nine kids total. And then my mom has six um, children wow. total. And yeah, and um, both of them had, you know, family bands and church that we traveled around and sang. I played drums. I don't know, I think about four or five was the first time I ever played drums with a family band. And then that's all I played till I was about 15 years old and picked up a guitar, decided I want to be a musician and not a drummer. Mm -hmm. No, not to the drummers out there. <laughs> well, uh, I could tell a funny drum story, but I'll wait till after the podcast. Kyle knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so let's back to you. So where are you originally from and where is your home base now? My, I'm kind of a, a mutt of Dallas and Fort Worth. You know, my dad is a native uh, of Mansfield and then my mom's a native of Irving, which are Dallas and Tarrant County. And I bounced between the two growing up. And I lived two doors down from my grandparents' house growing up in Mansfield. Oh, nice. So I'm back in the 76063. And just at one point, I wanted to be the, uh, the biggest uh, songwriter, artist out of Mansfield. And then people like Josh Weathers came out. And it was just like, okay, cool. At least we're making a name for our little town. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you got some good stuff. So you, you have a new project coming up. Yeah, so we've got, um, we've got, we're trying to get 12 songs. I think we're probably going to do two covers that we kind of are hoping to become public domain by the time we record them. But uh, we got uh, 10, 10 song originals we're going to throw out there, and it's just pretty much feel good, honky tonk music, you know, and it's going to be, the band's going to be recording it, and we're going to, you know, we've been using hiring musicians for our other other singles but this one we're going to play all the parts and just kind of put ourselves out there and let it go yeah i liked how you put it in your email all out honky tonk blitz that's yeah. cool that's some cool words right there that's it yeah man it's feel good music you know we got it we got a song on there called, that we're going to do called no sad uh no sad songs because uh we're just not that vibe we're not that energy we're you know we're, we're, we're who you want to come see after a long hard work week to escape all that you know mm, true so, so yeah it's it's going to be a full out honky tonk blitz like you said yeah i like that and i noticed that now are you recording at rosewood we have a song right now called sweet love that we are recording at rosewood um we i really don't know where we're going to do this out you know we've been doing some live recordings and i've been tweaking it here at the house and We'll just see what happens. I don't know. It's yeah. a it's a big financial commitment to throw down twelve songs at once, you know. Oh, yes, that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a lot. Yes. But we'll so, see. Yeah. So most of the those you wrote or co-wrote with someone. Yeah, pretty much. I don't. It's weird because I like co-writing. I just don't seem to do it that often. Um, a lot of my ideas will come up. I usually, you know, write melodies and music before anything else. And I kind of come together with my thought song ideas and my music song ideas and see if any of them match up. You know, when I write with somebody else, it, it seems to be, you know, we're seeing if, if one of us have an idea that, that gets the other going. And I enjoy doing that. I just don't do it that often. So I think all these are all songs I, I wrote. One of them I co-wrote with a guy named Garrett Bradford. Um, it's a song that we're probably going to throw on there uh, called Can't Quit You. Mm. So, yeah. Good Sounds one. good. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Only, only time you're down for the co-write is when Dusty Motes calls you on the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? hey, he he knows that I'm, I'm like-minded with him. And a lot of times <laughs> I'm sitting there looking for something to do because I'm so ADD and he, he caught me at a good time. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of your music that these... Okay, I want to talk about Honky Tonk Angel because okay. I, I want to talk about the reference to the wine because I had to, I literally have had to make a pledge. I will not drink wine in public. It's only for at home. 
because like <laughs> like at home like I'll have a few cocktails or if we're out with our friends or down you know doing our fishing or whatever and I like to wind down with a little bit of wine and then it's like okay we're done so I get in public and I start drinking wine it, it just doesn't turn out it's not very pretty and so wine we even people silly yeah <laughs> I love winos they're the funnest to hang out in bars because they just get fun and happy you know yeah yeah and I want to take my shoes off and you know it's like literally because I think I'm at home so yeah us girls have we had this discussion the other night because I really wanted some wine we were at an event a musical event that was actually here and it was like don't do it and I, I was very disciplined and I didn't but anyway so honky tonk angel I love that one tell me about that thank you that that was a uh, song I did I think I wrote that back in 2018 when I really started writing my own stuff and uh we have them in Fort Worth. I'm sure every every music city has them, but you go to the stockyards and, mm -hmm. and they come in in their skirts and their cowboy boots and their straw hats and they don't pay for a drink all night. They dance with everybody there and yeah. go home leaving a trail of broken hearts, you know? So, <laughs> that's those a good honky tonk one. angels, you know? What that's I mean? that's so. a good one. And I like, and then we'll, we'll switch to picking sides. Picking great, great message, great message, great message, great writing on that. Thank you. Yeah, some of the songs, um, like Honky Tonk Angel was an idea, and I just tinkered with it over time and, you know, kind of polished it up till I felt it was finished. Picking Sides is one of those songs that I, I kind of woke up after about a two-day drunk, pretty much, and uh, I was kind of over myself, you know, and that kind of song came out, and it was done in about 10 minutes. And wow. So, so yeah, I, I used to struggle a lot with uh, drinking too much and kind of suppressing things and keeping them inside, and that's how I dealt with it. So that kind of song was an evolution of, I guess, myself, really. Wow, that's uh, a great story and great song. Yeah. And, and then that's, another one I liked was A Million Miles From Home. A Million Miles From Home. So when I graduated high school, I hit the road. Uh, that song's kind of bio, biographical. Um, and started traveling around the country building mall stores you know mm -hmm. if you bought panties at a victoria's secret in the early aughts i probably finished out the store you know wow so, yeah so i don't know it's that rambling fever i love i love driving i love even now whenever we get the opportunity to take a take a three or four day run just being on the road the different people you meet different different environments and you know, as a as a kid, um, I went to 19 different schools before I graduated. So it's like, you know, you're a million miles from home. You know, home is kind of where you're at. But at the same time, you're you never really um, I don't know. I don't identify with a home like Mansfield's my hometown. But, you know, home is who you surround yourself with and you and your mm -hmm. core, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That is so true. So true. So I know that you've played or shared the stage with uh, William Buckman, Gary P. Nunn, Jack Ingram. So what are your live shows like? What are, are you got? You've got some shows going on. Let's talk about your live shows. So we um, well, we do have upcoming shows around the Metroplex. We're playing Mama Tried this Friday night. But we are, like I said, we're high energy. We, you know, like Dale Watson says, honky tonkers don't cry. We consider ourselves honky tonkers. We are smile on our faces and getting through it with music. Um, we, you know, I think y'all had William Beckman on. I know y'all are really high on to him. I think we're going to be playing another show with him next year. Um, so I actually saw him in Austin. It was crazy. I was on vacation a couple of weeks ago and I'm walking down South Congress after eating Hop Dotty and he's just walking down the street. William Beckman, what are you doing? You know, I was like, what's oh, how cool. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. Yeah. So <laughs> he's, he, uh, he told me he was um, getting interviewed because Rodney Foster's being inducted into the Hall of Fame and um, Texas Music Hall of Fame this year. Oh, so man, that's amazing. Nice. that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Well yeah. deserved for Rodney. And he had a huge I influence know. on William. Yes, yes. Yeah. Great story so, there. That's, that's yeah, what we, I love. That's what I love about our Texas music community you know it's yeah. just like you just sit I mean like you run into each other and it's like it's just it's just such a cool thing such a bond camaraderie oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and, and and most most artists that I've met that that I respect and have listened to and kind of you know kind of really got into um without meeting them anytime I meet them they've never disappointed and they're always pretty gracious and you know there's never 
I haven't ever met anybody like, golly, that guy's not who I thought he was, you know, which uh, I, right. I think to, I think that's a big testament to Texas music fans because we kind of don't take phony, you know what I mean? Like, we, that's true. We want people to write their songs, get it yes. off the song. Okay. Who wrote the song? We want to know where this came from. We don't, we don't that's, want phony. We want raw in our face and true. And, and so, yeah. That's exactly right. And you're delivering a lot of that. Well, anything else we need to discuss before we kind of start wrapping this up? Um, no, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously I want to plug our website where you can find us, bradrussellband.com. Um, and then just, you know, we do send out a lot. If you sign up for our newsletter, we send out a lot of our raw um, live recorded stuff that you know, so oh, if, you, if you're a fan nice. of the newsletter, you can sign up and you can get some of these these unreleased cut, kind of what I sent you. You know, I think mm -hmm. I sent you three tunes that we're we're gonna be recording. Mm -hmm. And so as as we do those, people can follow along and we try to put ourselves out there a lot to our fans so they can they can feel like they're more connected when they come to the show. And then um other than that, man, just keep doing what y'all are doing, spreading the word, because that's like word of mouth is probably the biggest um the biggest way that we grow you know I think one of the, the the biggest backhanded compliment I get every time somebody comes to see us is have I never heard of you you know and it's like okay well a I'm not a marketing guru but I'm glad you like it. you know what I mean yeah uh, yes yeah, so, yes so share share things even if it ain't for us for other musicians you believe in I think that's a big thing um and come catch us mama tribe Friday Follow us on Bands in Town and come see us. Definitely get to a show and definitely follow the music. And I know you'll be staying in touch because I want to know how the new project is coming along. And when those that new album comes out, that'll that'll be something that my ears will want to hear. So one last question before we wrap it up. If you were a cocktail, what would you be? Man, I am straight Topo Chico and Lime. That's my, that's me. Perfect. Um, I am what I am with a little twist, you know. I like it. Well, Brad Russell, thank you so much for joining us. Nice to get to see you face to face. And we look forward to everything you have coming up. All right. Thank you. all And with a heavy tongue, she knew where I was from. As she left, I dared to say, well, you can 